What's going on, mate? This is Riley Knight from the podcast half Assed History here to have a bit of a chat with you about the heroes featured in Hidden Cup 5. All the heroes the players are using to hide their true identities are real-life people from history featured as units in various Age of Empires campaigns. And while T90 is an avid history lover, his knowledge and memory of history would uh, pretty firmly make him a historical low elo legend, I think it's fair to say. So he invited me along to tell you a thing or two about these heroes we're watching square off against one another. Let's get to know one of them a little bit better. It's a proud Hidden Cup tradition to feature a siege weapon as one of the characters. And uh, as we are now all out of unique trebuchets, it is time to enlist for the first time a bombard cannon, but not just any bombard cannon, the one wielded by the great Jean Bureau, master of French artillery, who fought in the closing stages of the Hundred Years' War. The Hundred Years' War ended after, no, not a hundred years, but 116, uh, actually, thanks in many respects to the power of French gunpowder weaponry. After over a century of back and forth, on and off fighting between the French and the English, the French were finally able to end the conflict altogether by using their mighty artillery against English-held towns and castles. And yes, there were all sorts of other factors that contributed to the French victory. The leadership of Charles VII, and of course Joan of Arc, the internal strife and economic issues that plagued England, shifting alliances with the Burgundians, yes, of course, all of that. But when push came to shove, the French were able to drive the English from the continent with the use of the very latest in gunpowder technology. And one of the men who enabled the French to do this was famed Dave cosplayer Jean Bureau, along with his brother Gaspard, two famous artillery commanders who were instrumental in bringing about a French victory. Jean Bureau was born into a middle-class family and began life as a lawyer, of all things, but alongside his brother he became fascinated with gunpowder technology and the two of them turned themselves into experts on the latest artillery innovations. In 1434, both Jean and Gaspard approached the French king, Charles VII, and offered their expertise with artillery to his ongoing campaigns against the English. Now, Charles, recognising a good thing when he saw it, he took the Bureau brothers on. I guess in Age of Empires terms, this is roughly the point that he clicked chemistry. No, no, actually, um, the, the French already had gunpowder weapons, didn't they? So, uh, no, this was the point, actually that Charles clicked siege engineers, right? So he could get fully upgraded BBCs. And those siege engineers were the Bureau brothers. They worked quickly to integrate the latest and most effective forms of gunpowder artillery into the French armies. And Jean in particular did very well for himself. Within five years, he held the title of Master Gunner of the French Artillery and was responsible for a great many successes on the battlefield. Many important sieges in the late 1430s and early 1440s were won thanks to Jean Bureau and his artillery. The castles that the English built on the continent in attempting to defend their lands, they crumbled under unrelenting French bombardments. More broadly, the castle, which had once been an unassailable defensive measure that would command the control of vast lands around it, it was now verging on obsolescence as people like Jean Bureau and the gunpowder artillery that he brought with him brought the future of warfare thundering down from the skies above. Before gunpowder artillery, taking a castle took months or even years of siege warfare, but now they would fall in days, blown to pieces by cannon fire. And again, broadly speaking, French cannons were amongst the very best in the world at the time because of the efforts of inventive engineers like Jean and Gaspard Bureau people who never stopped looking for new ways to improve the technology that they used. With their artillery, the French drove the English out of Normandy to the north and then turned their attention to Gascony in the south, and the English were completely unprepared to defend themselves from the French artillery that rolled in to destroy their towns and castles, and Jean Bureau was a key player in the decisive Battle of Castillon, fought on the 17th of July, 1453. Jean spread out hundreds of pieces of French artillery all around the town and all defended by detachments of troops. We all know you've got to defend your bombards, can't leave them undefended from a cav push. And these cannons tore the English to pieces as they foolishly advanced on the French positions. And it wasn't long before Jean was able to push his artillery forward to besiege the English castle, which quickly surrendered. And this victory marked the effective end of the Hundred Years' War. The English were driven from Gascony, their ambitions to seize the French throne crumbling to nothing, just as their castles had under the French artillery bombardments. 
And for his efforts in bringing about this monumental victory, Jean Bureau was made a lord and given an estate, and to this day is remembered as a pioneer of gunpowder technology in Western Europe. But will Jean Bureau be able to rain fire and destruction down upon his foes in Hidden Cup 5? Will he make it further than the last Hidden Cup siege weapon, Warwolf, knocked out in the quarters of HC4? There's only one way to know. Keep watching as Hidden Cup 5 continues.